So here we are with our second video in the Galactic Mail tutorials. Um, this one we're going to be focusing on the rocket. So, so far in our learning objectives we have um, learnt about the actions of set direction variables and we've learned about the actions of wrap around the room. In our previous tutorial we have ticked off the specifications of creating both moons and asteroids that move in random direction upon their creation and we've also made a background image to make the place look nice and pretty. And in this tutorial we're going to create the spaceship object and we're going to make it so pressing the A and D keys will make it spin left and right. But before we do we need to talk about the concept direction of direction in Game Maker Studio 2. Now you see up here is an image of a compass and it's the same thing as we're talking about the direction it has 360 degrees and a long time ago someone um, decided that zero degrees would be north and so we're all used to the idea of zero being north um, in our compasses and south being 180 degrees. So that's what it is in a normal compass but it's a bit different in Game Maker Studio. Game Maker Studio instead has the direction so zero degrees is right. Um, this is actually quite a common um, arbitrary decision in many um, computer platforms. So right is zero degrees, up is 90 degrees, left is 180 degrees, and down is 270 degrees. So if you're telling an object that you want it to point right, you want it to point at towards zero degrees. If you're saying to move up, you want it to move towards 90 degrees. So that just gives you an idea of how um, we to work in, in angles and in um, degrees in Game Maker Studio 2. So here we are um, back into Game Maker Studio now. Um, before we actually go about making the rocket ship there, something we have to do before that. Um, and I'm just going to open the room up to show you that. So in the room here, we have a moon. In fact, in the game yourself will have several moons. The thing is, and I'm just going to have to do this and you're going to have to um, trust me on this and then you'll see later on why we actually go about doing this. But we need to make a special moon and that's the moon that the rocket ship is actually going to be sitting on and it has to differentiate itself from the other moons here. And at the moment, remember this is the object and each one of these is an instance of the moon object. Now I want to be able to treat this object set differently so I actually have to make a special object by which to do that. So I'm going to right mouse click here and I'm going to um, duplicate the moon object. And I'm basically going to duplicate the moon object and I'm just going to make it into um, object special moon. So I'm just going to change the name here, object, object special moon. Radio and um, I need to, and now that I've done that, and don't do nothing else more than just change it to object special moon. It's got all the exact same features as the moon. Um, but in here, I want to place it into this room, but I also want to place it so it, it it's above everything else because this is the moon that, that the um, spaceship's going to be on is our special moon. So to do that, I need to come over to what's called layers over here. And at the moment we have the background layer, which is the image, and we have all these other layers, all the other instances are on that layer, but I want a layer above that because I want to make sure that this layer, that this moon doesn't actually, that no other objects fly across on top of it. So I'm going to create a new layer down here. So create a new instance layer because it's the layer that instances go on. And then I'm going to rename this layer. Uh, rename it, there we are. And I'm going to call it um, special moon. Radio. And then I'm going to bring the special moon onto that. You see it's indistinguishable from it, but if I move it over the top of here, you see it actually goes on top of all the other instances, which is not the case with the other ones. If, if I go back to the instance layer, and if I move him, you see that um, these actually will go above, randomly actually go above the different moons. So, 
I now have my special moon in there. I've got special moon, I've got other three moons, I've got some asteroids. I'm again just going to test it to make sure that all works and nothing weird happens. Let's have a look. And yep, they're all there and they're all wrapping around, which is a beautiful thing. And you'll notice that our special moon, which is this one here, I believe, will always go on top of the other ones. Okay, so we've got a special moon and now we've got to put our rocket in. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to our workspace, um, F12 to clear it up, and then bring the um, resources back out here again. Okay, so we're bringing a, uh, making an object, so I want to create a sprite. Um, I'm going to import the little rocket ship sprite. Now, we want to actually have the landed one, so just go landed. It'll be fine. Yep, you can come on in. Now, you can see here, we have 72 frames. And the rocket spins in all different directions. Okay, and that's important. It's actually something you we didn't actually discuss beforehand, but each one of these frames actually is numbered. So it actually refers to this frame one, two, all the way through to 72. So the computer actually knows that. Now let's get rid of the screen in the background like we have in the past, hold, and then I'm going to, oh sorry, I'm going to edit image, and U along to the end, and then U, I'm going to come over here, and Remove color. Yep, so it's back down to that. Close you down. She's in here. Right, let's give it a name SPR, and I'm going to call it Landed. SPR Landed. Yep. And I need to set the origin for the middle because we're going to make this rocket ship spin around. And we want it to spin on the origin point, not out the side here because that just be really weird. Right here, so now I've made my um, sprite. I now need to need to make the um, the object just before though. Um, each one of these ones, each one of these frames, they're actually called subsprites. So we have the sprite, which is the overall one, and each one of these frames are referred to as a subsprite and they can be referred to as their number. One, two, etc. Right here, so I'm gonna close you down and let's make our object. So over here, right mouse click and go to create object and OBJ landed and the sprite we're going to choose is the sprite landed um, and not coincidentally notice that the the original sprite, so sprite 1, is pointing in the right direction which is zero degrees as far as our directions are concerned. Um, I've named the object a sprite. I now need to, what I'm going to do is we want the sprite to, when it first loads up, we want it to jump to the same point as the special moon, because that's actually where the sprite is going to reside, on the special moon. Um, and so, therefore, this is going to occur at an end step event. So we've got a step event, which is number four, which is every single tick. Now, the end step of Event, the same as the beginning step, but end step event is a very particular one, and this is an event that happens after all the other things have happened in that step. So remember a step is the beat that occurs um, through the actual game, so it happens 30 times a second. So at the very end of that step, this action, this event will happen, and these actions will occur. And this action we're going to go to is in our movement, over here, movement, and we want it to not set point, wanted to jump to a point, wanted to jump to a particular location. Radio, and that's the X and Y location. So remember, our room is all the coordinates, X is along this way, along left and right, Y is up and down. So we wanted to go to particular X and Y coordinates. Now, the X and Y coordinates we want to go to are the same X and Y coordinates of the special moon object. See? So what let's do there is I actually say where do I want it to go? The X, I want it to go to object underscore special moon dot X. And what that says is take the X, the current X value of the special moon, and put that value there. So they're both the same um, same location. And it's same OBJ underscore um, special moon. Yes, thank you. Dot y. So what this should do is it should make the, when we run it, make the spaceship jump to the exact same location 
um, at the end of the very first step the exact same location as the moon and as the moon moves around at the end of every step where the moon moves around the spaceship will jump to wherever the new moon location is so it continuously keeps refreshing on the same location as the moon so let's see if that works so let's open that room up and I'm going to take the special object lander now our special moon is on here um, and and again we've got to keep in mind too so actually our special moon is this one here, yep, so we have special moons in the middle there. But we also want our spaceship to be on top of the special moon. So as I said before, we need to put a layer in, and I need to rename that layer. I'm going to rename that um, ship. So this is the layer the ship appears on. So the ship's going to fly, it's going to be above all the other different objects, including the special moon, so it's always going to be on top. And in here, I'm going to take an object landed, and I'm going to place it over here. So if it all works, as soon as it runs, as soon as it runs this ship will jump over to the moon and then as the moon moves around the room the ship can continuously keep going to the exact same x and y location and look at that it's over there hello happy 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 right here so we have achieved that first step so i'm just going to again go back to our workspace clear it and what we need to work on now is we now can make the actual ship turn left and right Right, yeah. So what we want to do is, um, at the end of each step event, not only do we want the spaceship to move to the same location as the special moon, we also want the spaceship to update its sprite so it's pointing in the right direction. So we have this here, which is set sprite, um, and the variable set sprite, which basically is going to choose the sub sprite. So remember we said we got the actual sprite, which is going to be the ship. And remember we've got frames, and we had frame 0, which is the very first one, and all the way through to 72 or 71. So frame 0 is the one that's pointing right, but how do we choose pointing up and pointing left, and, oh, sorry, yeah, pointing left, pointing down. And how we do that is that we actually take a variable called direction. So direction is the direction of this particular object, which is the sprite direction. Okay, so it has a set value, and I'm going to take that and divide that by 5 because then we have 72 sub images or 72 frames, and 360 degrees divided by 5 equals 72. So that's why we have that number there. So, what they should do is then we'll update, update the actual sprite according to the direction that the, um, that the spaceship is facing. Now we have to change the direction the spaceship is. Um, is facing and we do that with our A and D keys. So I'm going to add event and we're going to have a key down event. So the key down event for um, letters of A is key down event and I'm going to add, I need to change direction. So um, I'm trying to remember where the direction one is. Is it in instances or is it a movement? I think it's in movement, here it is, set direction variable. So at the moment, the direction variable is, is you know, is, is a relative value. We want it to press the A key, we want it to move or rotate left, which means we'll be increasing the, or decreasing um, the value of, um, the value of the, um, no, it'll be increasing, it'll go from zero up to 90 to 270. So you'll be increasing the value of the, of the degrees. So we need to plus 10, we'll have to say plus, put 10 in and relative. So remember that'll increase it by 10 if you're holding down the ATF. As long as you're holding it down, it'll increase the degrees by 10 and will give you um, a turning left process. So let's go for the key down and keep um, letters and the D key, which is over here. And for the D key, again, I need to set directional variable. And this time it has to be negative 10, as well as being relative. So let's see, fingers crossed that I've done all that correct. And it's actually going to show up and oh, the spaceship's there. Oh look, I'm turning left and I'm turning right and it's moving and I am now a happy person. No worries. Well, there you go. We now have a rocket ship on there and it spins left and right when we press our A and D keys. 
And in relation to progressing towards our learning goal here, in this lesson you've learnt about the event and the step. And you've also learnt about the actions of jump to point and set sprite and the concepts of sub-images and sprite animation, object coordination, coordinates and direction.